How are you guys doing? This is Ryan, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to just give some updates where have I been. I've been posting a couple things to the channel, some conferences and some speeches that I've been making, and I uh, haven't been doing my as weekly updates. I do want to get back into that. Um, and I first want to share and let's jump into what, you know, where we think the markets are, where the markets are at. There's been a lot of movement uh, to the, especially to the downside. There's a lot more fear in the markets today. And kind of my thoughts on that, not financial advice, but you know, I always enjoy Hearing perspectives on the markets, and um, and I'm going to share mine. Feel free to share yours down in the comment section. Don't take this as financial advice. Um, and uh, yeah, so I feel like the market has essentially been going sideways for six months. You know, if you look back at it, or even further for some coins, and that uh, we went down under two trillion. I think that's significant. Uh, and, and I feel like it is likely a bottom. Um, I do feel like these are very good prices. Uh, for what's to come, I always do look at the, like the total market cap of all cryptocurrencies as more of my guiding light. You know what I try to follow, and uh, and we fell under two trillion dollars, and we're still under the twenty twenty one market top for total market cap, which was three point three trillion. So there's not too many things in the world right now that are cheaper than what they were, you know, uh, a few years ago. Everything's a lot more. There's a lot of inflation, which uh, we'll talk about a little bit more later, but. So I do think this is significant uh, in terms of what cycles mean and, you know, a lot of, um, you know, as I spend more time in crypto, you know, there's so many speculators and so many people that are excited about the price, but, you know, we wish the price was going up for some different reasons sometimes, you know, not just because there's a supply chain shock from the um, from coins having, you know, uh, having to their, their mining supply. So, uh, yeah, I, I think from a, a, a speculative perspective, uh, you know, I feel like we've been going nowhere for a while. There's been a good amount of fear in the market. And, uh, you know, the market's going to prepare to start going up this fall. You know, I think that uh, that's as a normal trend. I feel like I've done this a few times now, and that's just what my gut's telling me. So I think we started, uh, you know, BTC did eclipse its all-time high, uh, but the total market cap hasn't. So I think once that breaks through 3.3 trillion and BTC breaks through its all-time high, you know, you'll see a lot more capital flow to the market and you'll start to see that spread amongst all alternative coins. And, you know, I'm much more bullish on a lot of other coins apart from BTC, uh, as I've expressed in this channel before, uh, se severely for a long time now, you know, not happy with the direction the, the market leader has gone in. And that's uh, caused a lot of, you know, slowed growth into a market that, uh, that is so powerful, you know, that the peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash is the goal. Uh, it's where my interest always is, is into cash coins and privacy, and things that, uh, you know, help the market operate and that, that uh, maximize humans' ability to do commerce and, uh, and, and also not have to deal with the inflation tax, which I said this and I talk about more. So yeah, I'm looking for 3.3 trillion to break through. Uh, and then, you know, probably run up to like five or so trillion. We'll have a pretty euphoric run and it'll be really exciting. And uh, a lot of people that have been buying over the last few years can, you know, celebrate that. And, uh, you know, um, and then, you know, hopefully we just keep on building the tools to help, you know, bring more economic freedom to more people. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, so I am still doing work. I'm working on the next Bitcoin Cash Conference back in Sylvania. We're doing another Bliss one, which will get announced later this fall. So we work on that behind the scenes. Uh, you know, I spoke at the Hard Rock Casino, which is on the channel. If you've not seen that video, go check it out before. I had a panel uh, to try to, you know, bring more education to operators to accept crypto. And, you know, had a, it was a great time. I worked with BitPay on it. It, it was very successful. And then um, I, I, I've been doing so much in my business right now, which is where a lot of my focus has had to go and a lot of exciting stuff happening with it. You know, maybe I should start making some more entrepreneurial-like content. If you'd like to see any entrepreneurial-like content or have any of those questions or video ideas, that you think would be engaging for people that are have a business or thinking about starting a business, you know, I, 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 that's really my life. My life is, you know, you know, my family, my business, and then crypto. You know, between all that or my businesses, there's not a whole lot more extra time. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking for five trillion market cap. You know, at that time, I think would be pretty euphoric. Uh, wouldn't be a heavy as heavy of a buyer of crypto as I as I am now at those levels. You know. Even though I I'll still root for the mission of crypto, um, in terms of the speculative nature of it, you know maybe go and uh, you, if you've been stashing away in cryptocurrencies, maybe go buy that thing you've been waiting to buy or investment you've been waiting to do, or something like that. And then uh, you know hopefully 
you know, I think the, the having is going to be less of a, you know, occurrence as it, as it continues to happen. And uh, it's going to be really uh, up to the utility. It's, and, uh, and that's what you really, really should follow. It's what I, I, I try to follow more and more. And uh, it's going to come down to, you know, the value proposition of these coins. And most of these coins are going to zero. You know, a lot of them have bad funding mechanisms. You know, uh, in, they're always very centralized in the way they, they run their ecosystem. Something came out earlier this year of DOT, DOT, uh, which is right around where Bitcoin Cash is. They, they, you know, they, they have like these, you know, VC early coins and they sell them off every year. And if they don't make it off that money, if they don't make an impact to the market, you know, then they're left with, you know, no, no more funds. So if you look at something like Bitcoin Cash, which just works off of voluntary, uh, you know, uh, interactions with the chain and to build ecosystems underneath it, to build real economies underneath it, not just VC coins trying to just do marketing and pump their coin, which is most of the market. And there's other coins that, that are doing a decent job too and building their infrastructure and, you know, the, the inflation doesn't get centralized control, which is an issue. Uh, but a lot of these coins are going to have issues as they run out of funds and they just need their coin to keep on going up so their funds can go up. I think the Ethereum Foundation, they sell like $100 million worth of Ethereum every year. Um, and they need to grow and they have grown, so it's worked. But if you're not growing fast enough and you blow through all your money and then you're not offering, you're going to grow because you're offering value, right? So it's an interesting market from that perspective. So those are my thoughts on the state of the market. Uh, you know, I mentioned if, you, if you're interested in seeing um, you know, any entrepreneur content, let me know down in the comment section. Uh, it's been a, you know, I've learned a lot, you know, I've been paying for a lot of education to make myself a, a better business owner. So that's been pretty cool. And uh, yeah, inflation, the election's been crazy. You know, a lot of my interest in crypto has to do with my <laughs> issues with the uh, military industrial complex, you know, funding, fighting forever wars. And uh, you know, a lot of the money printing comes from that and causes the inflation. And uh, it, it makes for a not so free market, which is something I think crypto helps with. And it's, you know, the election cycle's got me a little down just watching the, you know, people just not talk about the importance of the corruption and the solutions to it. You know, it's like they, 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 if they can identify it, like, for example, like Ukraine war, like what's a reason to fight the Ukraine war? Putin's a madman. He's going to take over Europe, right? Like, like I, I've been trying to look for that answer. Like, what, why do you believe we should take from other people here and print money we don't have and give to really not give the people there, give, buy weapons for people there from companies over here that are really, you know, uh, encouraging it to happen. And that's like the whole, the whole fraud or corruption. And it, it's, Putin is a madman, right? I mean, he needs to be stopped and contained. But where's the evidence for that? You know, where's the evidence for that? So he invaded a country. Okay, there's, there's some evidence. Okay. Well, let's first start with if he was looking to take over Ukraine. Ukraine is a country of 44 million people. And he sent in 44,000 troops and immediately wanted to negotiate. Let's start with that. And um, if you're gonna take over a country of 44 million, you don't send in 44,000 troops. It can sound like a big number, but for example, when, when Hitler took Pol Poland, he sent in 1.5 million troops. Like that is someone trying to take over a country. Uh, not, you know, this is, uh, if you look at further back, like everyone thinks of this Ukraine thing's new, uh, in 2014, uh, there was an, a coup that, uh, an uprising and, and took out their current, the president at the time was democratically elected to Ukraine named Viktor Vinokovich. And there's a lot of hostility at the time. Uh, he was kind of more of a Russian friendly president, which if he's a U NATO friendly, Russian friendly, like that's where the whole conflict really comes in. Like, do we have access and power uh, over there? So, and there was hostility at the time. You know, there was, uh, you know, there was a lot of tension on the borders in Donbass. And uh, there's videos you can watch on BBC and like people being like uh, outlawing, you know, certain lang uh, Russian language be spoken over there. And there was, you know, there was conflict and like essentially a civil war. And uh, you know, essentially there, it got caught on video. You can look it up that the United States was somewhat involved with the coup. They were handpicking out the next cabinet to get elected. Um, into Ukraine, and uh, there's been since, and there's been like efforts to, you know, ease the tension. There was something called the, the Minsk Agreement, I think, the Minsk Agreement, which was uh, 
you know, an agreement that, uh, that would lower hostility. You know, and, I, and I do believe it was not having Ukraine join, join NATO, which was talked about NATO, for example. So NATO is an organization of its very strong Western alliance. And where the military industrial complex is involved in that is that when you join NATO, you have to buy NATO specified weapons. So, and those are the military contractors from the United States. And that's why it's, it's a huge business for them. How many more people can get to join NATO? So let's say, like I'm in a buying group, like how many more, how many factories can join here and how many more people can get in the buying group? So we buy those factories and do more business. So this is done on a, on a, in the business of war. So let's, let's join NATO and buy these massive amounts of weapons. Um, so is Putin really a madman or are we trying to get more influence and potentially sell more weapons for certain people to benefit and not necessarily you who is might be pushing for the war. So uh, and then, you know, when Zelensky ran for president, he ran to sign the Minsk Agreement and lower tensions, and of course he did not. And then uh, there's been attempts to diplomatically solve the war, and uh, they've been pushed down uh, and, you know, pushing the Ukrainians to still fight. It seems like we're okay with shedding Ukrainian blood. Uh, and it's uh, really unfortunate, you know, I, I, I wish for diplomacy and I wish for, you know, real markets to work. These aren't real markets, these are governments trapping markets. So, um, we print all this money we don't have. And in a world with cryptocurrency, uh, you can't just print money and give it to people, you know. It doesn't work like that, you know. So, I don't know, let me th you know your thoughts down in the comment section. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you guys.